Civil and environmental engineers help address so many of the world's most important issues right now. We are leaders in addressing issues related to climate change, impact of climate change, the world, civil infrastructure on the environment. We're leaders in developing strategies for cleaning up the environment. We're leaders in developing new approaches for building a next generation of cities, for building structures, for building uh, transportation systems. We uh, develop new types of design strategies, new design processes, uh, new products, so that we can innovate to create new solutions to address the world's issues. Northeastern CEE is one of the most interesting and invigorating places to work because the disciplines are so different and yet so connected. We're all working on the big problem of how do we as humans exist in this physical space, but we're working on it from like, how do we work with the coastline? How do we manage our wastewater system? How do we make sure everyone has clean drinking water? How do we make sure all of these are done equitably in a bunch of complex societies? We're all working towards the same sort of broad-based goal, and I think that that makes for a very exciting department. Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering has two primary undergraduate degrees, a BS in Civil Engineering and a BS in Environmental Engineering. We also have a number of combined majors. These include Civil Engineering and Architectural Studies, Environmental Engineering and Landscape Architecture, Civil Engineering and Computer Science, and Environmental Engineering and Health Science. Students can greatly personalize their experience in Civil and Environmental Engineering. Many of our undergraduates do research in civil and environmental engineering. There's a huge range of opportunities working with our faculty uh, across many different types of topics. Uh, civil and environmental engineering has a number of concentrations that um, are the foundation of the discipline. These include uh, environmental engineering, water resources engineering, transportation engineering, structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, and construction management. This then leads to a variety of disciplinary and interdisciplinary research areas that are thriving in our field. This includes critical infrastructure resilience, climate adaptation, green energy, environmental health, and a variety of other topics. The value of research to students is absolutely putting into practice what you're learning in your class. So your class, you're going to have a bunch of different concepts thrown at you, lots of different equations, lots of practice problems and tests. We have a grand opening for the CEE Innovation Studio. This is a state-of-the-art facility that has a large build space where students can do hands-on projects as part of their laboratories or coursework in a variety of courses. And the question is, how does that translate to what we're actually learning about the natural environment? Especially in civil and environmental engineering, everything we do exists outside your window in some respect. We have undergraduate students working not only in Boston, but at our fabulous coastal engineering facilities in Nahant, and at our large-scale testing laboratory, the Stress Laboratory in Burlington. And after I started meeting some of the professors and like figuring out what it is that they do and like all their different research projects. I was just so interested in them and I wanted to learn more about them. Freshman year, I was doing a research project helping out one of the graduating seniors on a tidal flow constructed wetland project. We were using plants to filter water, denitrify it, and then remove microplastics from the water to make it safer to drink. I had no idea to like what to expect going in, but I was immediately like trusted in the lab to do all the different like daily functions that we needed for the project. We also have a fabulous set of uh, Dialogue of Civilizations courses where each summer several of our faculty take our students overseas uh, for intensive courses in particular areas related to uh, climate change, impact of climate change, related to sustainable transportation strategies uh, and other topics of the sort. I've actually been on two dialogues. The first one, a sustainable energy dialogue in Brazil. And it was a great time touring different facilities that have renewable energy sources and just seeing the different cultures within Brazil. And then my second dialogue that I went on was with Professor Luca Caracoglia in Trieste, Italy. On the timber and masonry design dialogue that I went on, we took a course 
on timber and masonry design, which is very useful. We went through the American Wood Council uh, National Design Specification Code, learning how to use that, how to design structures and structural elements out of wood, and how to understand using building codes. And then with our other course, we actually had a little project that we did. We went to various churches around the area, and we all picked one, and we made a presentation on its structural characteristics and architectural characteristics. It was also just a great experience being hosted at the University of Trieste, where we got to interact with local students and local professors. So my dialogue was the sustainable transportation dialogue to the Netherlands, where we studied the different cycling infrastructure, overall how transportation occurs in the Netherlands, because it's consistently rated as one of the best transportation systems in the world, and also one of the best places to cycle in the world. Basically taking all that we learned there and seeing if we can apply it back here in America. It was actually so much fun because since it was focused on sustainable transportation, we were given transportation passes to basically just explore the country using their railway system and also we were given bicycles so that we could cycle to all of the neighboring towns from where we were staying. I would suggest that a student go on a dialogue because it's just a great way to take courses that could be required for your curriculum but in a completely different setting and in a completely different context and it's with a group of students that you form a very close relationship with and also with the professor. Co-op is a fabulous form of education. Our department is a leader nationally in civil and environmental engineering co-op. Students do several co-ops as part of their degree, going out for six months of co-op uh, two or three times during their degree program. And we place our students all over the region, all over the country, and all over the world. But it's really that um, experiential learning component of taking the knowledge that you're learning in the classroom and applying it in a professional setting. The co-op program is just really good because it helps you figure out what you do and what you don't like. I think that classes give you the fundamentals. They teach you the theory behind everything, whereas on co-op you get to actually apply that and you get to see how some of the theory that you learn in classes comes to fruition. We become their co-op coordinator. Students make appointments with us. They meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. We talk about their career goals. Every student is unique in what they're looking to do and where they want to do it, so we really work directly with the students on figuring out what that looks like and supporting them in that. My first co-op was at a research lab out in Worcester and I was working on the historical research, research and analysis of the Lower Columbia River in Portland, Oregon. That sort of made me realize that I liked hydraulic properties and engineering with water. To build on that, my second co-op, I wanted to incorporate geology in with the water, so hydrogeology and different groundwater attributes that I could really research and study. And so I went to another co-op in Acton, so much closer to Boston, less of a commute, but I was able to actually figure out that I liked the remediation side and the actual engineering of solving problems. And that's what I've been able to do, which has been pretty cool. So I've done three co-ops at my time here at Northeastern. Uh, my first one with uh, Walker Parking Consultants. My second co-op was with Longfellow Design Build, where I was designing framing plans for high-end residential housing in Cape Cod. And then my third co-op was with Gill Engineering, where I currently work part-time doing bridge design. I've been on two co-ops, um, both were at Suffolk Construction. So my first one, I was in the scheduling and staffing department. And then through that, I met my boss for my second co-op, actually. So I talked with him, expressed my interest in coming back and working out in the field, as opposed to the office. He invited me back gave me my second opportunity and we were off and running. Doing my two co-ops at Suffolk introduced me to the world of construction management, which I knew a little bit about through my studies in civil engineering, but not fully exposed to. So being able to get a foot in the door there and, and ultimately work my way towards a second co-op completely painted a, a kind of a perfect picture of what construction is. I would say the best experience of co-op altogether was during my second co-op. My boss was going on vacation for a week. So I was kind of the point person for the whole job site that week, which is sort of a cool culmination of, of everything I had been working towards and all my knowledge I had learned at Suffolk and of construction. Kind of got to put it to the test and kind of see what I knew and really test myself, which is cool. In both our civil and environmental engineering programs, we have a fabulous culminating capstone experience. It's a really great opportunity for them to take all of the skills that they've learned from co-op, from their classroom, from their research, from their student groups, 
and put together a project basically that can help solve or enhance infrastructure in, in society. The students can choose between doing a capstone in structures, in transportation, or in environmental engineering. So our students present an idea to overcome, uh, for example, climate change issue like uh, seawall deterioration. So they come up with a prototype and they present. It's a great opportunity for them to participate and also seeing uh, when they go and compete uh, how good their work is. Because I don't think sometimes they realize uh, what impact they could have. It's always a great opportunity for them to, to be recognized. I'm the ecological engineer for the Emerald 2 project. It kind of happened because of my experience at Northeastern. The Emerald 2 is really focused on wave damping and shoreline protection, um, coastal resilience. So uh, I was able to take some of my wetland knowledge and apply that to this project. I met a lot of really great students that became part of my close friends. And then I also found this passion for wetlands and wetland treatment. Ultimately, that led me to uh, where I am now. Our student groups are wonderful and provide a variety of opportunities for students to get together. Engineers Without Borders is a service engineering club uh, targeted towards design projects in different countries where we can basically start the designs from scratch and then work on them while we're here and then travel abroad to those countries and implement the designs that we created while we were here. I joined the club as a freshman. It was just, it was a great experience. Me being a young engineer, not really knowing anything about the field, I learned so much, just the different experiences I had in the club. We are currently involved in a water treatment and distribution system for two villages in Uganda now. We're now creating the system for about a population of 4,000, so. <laughs> We're really excited. One of the student groups that I'm in is, um, it's called Solar Decathlon, and basically you have to design a net zero energy building as college undergrads. And it's a competition hosted by the Department of Energy. Doing like a vertical load takedown analysis on co-op, that was something that I was able to do again for this project. And it was just, it was nice because a lot of the other students, too, they had co-ops as well. We basically just took all of our co-op experiences and we were able to like merge them so that we could design this one project. It's just great to be around like-minded people who really want to just do research and learn outside of the classroom and be able to apply what they learn in the classroom to something else. The club which I've been involved in the most is definitely Northeastern University's chapter of ASCE. And ASCE is a very vital organization for civil engineering students because it allows you to gain not only relationships with professors and people in industry, but you get a sense of what kind of civil engineering pathway you want to go down. We have weekly presentations with firms that come down from different disciplines and they give a presentation. And we also do a bunch of team building events, community events. I'm actually a community service project manager for ASCE, and I have been leading a renovation ed effort at uh, Fenway Garden Society's Accessible Garden. Within NUASCE, we have two primary competing teams, one of which is Steel Bridge, that's what I'm involved in, and then the other one is Concrete Canoe. In Steel Bridge, we actually got uh, first place in our regional competition back in April and then we headed to Virginia Tech to compete in nationals. It was a very mind-blowing experience to see all of the different uh, bridges that were fabricated and assembled from different schools around the country and to see all the different techniques that they've used to improve their build time and reduce weight and cost. Faculty actually care about you and want to see you succeed in engineering because they often have worked in engineering and they know what it takes. They're generally passionate and excited to not only share what they know but just make sure that you're supported in learning and supported in your classes. The Civil and Environmental Engineering Department is incredibly supportive and I've never, never met a professor who didn't have time to talk. If you have any sort of ambition, if you have any sort of just thing you want to accomplish, go for it. Like, the sky's the limit here. Civil and environmental engineering is an exciting field that is evolving with so many opportunities. If you're interested in helping to create sustainable and resilient communities for the world, 
I invite you to learn more about our programs and we look forward to welcoming you in our department in the future. When I think of the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department here at Northeastern, the word that comes to mind is supportive. Community. Problem solvers. Creative exploration. Cohesion. Collaboration.